Mr. The Minister, on a number of aspects. Um, as the Minister knows, I was a school teacher myself for 15 years, as well as Deputy um, Norma Foley from, from, from Kerry. So we have a number of questions which are specific to the Leaving Cert. Um, I suppose in the context of, of where we're at with, with COVID, we, we fully understand that this was a difficult decision for the Minister. It didn't come lightly. And I suppose, look, you're, you're moving with the public health advice as it comes, and we understand that. Um, we understand that the move was meant to, to, to bring greater certainty, particularly to, to the students that were sitting the Leaving Cert this year. Um, but a, a number of questions obviously um, remain outstanding. Um, one such question, Deputy Byrne just alluded to it there. Um, there's issues about the standardisation uh, of the results. And I suppose there's specific references in the document that you circulated last week, which essentially suggested that there be profiling of schools. And, and I suppose the concern that we um, I suppose the students and, and teachers would have is that I suppose schools in disadvantaged areas in particular could could struggle if you know based on the model that, that might be employed. So I'd ask the minister just to clarify um, issues around that kind of modelling. The second issue, um, which seems to be coming up quite a bit, is the clarification on people that will actually sit the exams whenever that may be. I suppose where we find ourselves in a time when we're phasing in when people can go for a cup of coffee or when people can go for a haircut or whatever it might be. Um, and at the same time, we can't give an, an indication to our students of when they may or may not be able to sit an exam. Um, the majority of phone calls I've received over the last week have been from parents um, whose students or whose, whose children are particularly concerned that they would like to sit the exam as quickly as possible. And I know that's what the minister's intention is, pending public health advice, but at the same time, I think students, whether it's through an alternative facility, where it's through a remote examination, an online exam in front of a webcam, there, we have to look at alternatives here to provide um, certainty for students. We can't let this roll on till, till the new year or till March next year. You know, there's people's lives at, at, at stake here. You know, there's potential for, for students to lose an entire year in their academic life. So I'd like if the minister could address, address that issue. Um, another issue that seems to be coming up quite a bit is the issue of children that are homeschooled. Um, I suppose they don't have the same experience of other students sitting in you know, conventional learning environment, um, sitting the same types of exams on a regular basis. Um, and I wonder what accommodation would be made for those students. Um, the late change of levels, I suppose, is a feature of, of all Leaving Cert students' lives. Um, I suppose the role of a teacher, again, you'd always recommend the, the students stay with higher level for as long as possible, right up to after the mock exams, maybe even later in the year after Easter, and I suppose you ultimately make that determination, will I drop a level or will I change a level at the last minute? How, how are those students going to be accommodated? Because as, as I read it, they can't be or they won't be by the looks of it. So I was wondering if the minister could, could clarify that as well. Um, also, the grading of non-curricular subjects, such as you know Polish, Romanian, and other mi minority languages, will say many of these students would sit that exam, um, you know, and receive little or no guidance from a teacher in their, you know, in that entire two-year period. How are those students going to be accommodated as well in, in, in the Leaving Cert? Um, finally, the rescinding of the results for the orals. Um, I suppose I'll be, I'll be blatantly honest. When, it, when, when you first made the declaration that students would get 100% for the orals. I myself as an Irish teacher at the time felt very uncomfortable with that, you know, that, that certain people who would really work very hard deserve that result um, and other students that will say may not have worked quite as hard but attain a similar result. I suppose what has changed or what advice have you been given in the, in the, in the meantime which has led you to change tact on that front? Um, and sorry, just as Deputy Byrne also mentioned, um, the issue of lobbying of teachers uh, and principals in, in regards to results, I suppose, look, we, we, we know the vast majority of people and parents will abide by the result that's given. But in, in, in circumstances where teachers are pressured or where a school comes under some kind of interference from, from external sources, I do believe that there needs to be some kind of regime of sanctions. I'm not sure if guidelines are sufficient. Now, we, we'll be talking about a very rare occasion that this would happen, but at the same time, there needs to be a deterrent for people engaging in, in that kind of a practice. And, and the big bone of contention I have is with fifth year students for next year, I think they need to be provided clarity. They, they're, they've operated on the basis that, you know, they've already lost 10 to 12 weeks of teaching time with their teachers and their schools. Potentially come September, they could be operating on a reduced timetable. We don't know what, what, what will happen in come September. So going forward, I'd like if the minister as well could clarify or outline what the plans for fifth years will be going into Leaving Cert next year. Will they be setting a reduced, time to, uh, reduced exam schedule or, you know, a more refined syllabus? Thanks.